Hello friends and welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're going to make steak garlic bread. So what you see on my counter is enough here to actually make two pieces of steak garlic bread. And actually this is quite a lot of food because as you see right there, there's beef. We're going to cut this up and it's actually a pound's worth. And it's going to go over these two things. So each one of these pieces of bread is going to get a half a pound of beef on it. And then you're going to add cheese to this, three different kinds. Then we have some olive oil, some butter, some garlic, some seasonings. And this is going to turn into such an amazing thing to eat. So let's get started with this. So we're going to take our pound of beef and you can use any kind of cut you want of this. This I think is just like some beef chuck, whatever. Um, and we're going to cut this into thin slices. Now, this just came out of a package that I bought. It did not have any time to be like frozen or anything like that. Because if it were frozen, it'd probably be a little bit better to cut because of the fact that if you don't freeze it completely or if it's something you brought out and it's thawed out for the most part when you're cutting it it's going to have a little bit of that frozen texture to it and it's going to stay stiffer when you cut it but if it's actually beef that hasn't been frozen or you know it's thawed completely you're going to get what i've got right here which if you have a sharp knife it's fine you'll slice right through but you just need to remember if you want to make it a little easier on yourself freeze it a little bit first and then cut it so anyway so here we go with this i'm cutting through i'm taking out any large pieces of fat along the way um if you have a little bit in here that's fine because it'll cook down a bit but you really don't want a lot of fat or tough pieces to end up in this because it'll just make it harder to eat um so just go ahead and cut through all of the beef and once we get this completely sliced up and all of the fat and everything else out of it we're going to get ready to cook this up so there's a lot of beef here once you get this sliced, but the whole goal here was try to go for thinner slices. So we're gonna take a large skillet, we're gonna put the heat up to a medium high heat, add at least two tablespoons of olive oil, and we're gonna like place this in the pan as the pan is heating up to where it is completely flat against the bottom because we're gonna sear the bottom of this when we start doing this. But we wanna make sure these aren't overlapping. We want them to cook evenly and make sure that everything gets, you know, its proper amount of heat to it. Because we're gonna cook this for anywhere from like four to five minutes on one side and then flip it. But along the way, we're gonna add some seasonings and everything like that, but we have to get the temperature up in the pan first. So once everything is in here, we're gonna get ready to cook this. So we are gonna use some seasonings on this. So we're gonna use about a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper on top of it. And then after this, we're using about a tablespoon of steak seasoning. Now this is Montreal steak seasoning. You can get any kind of steak seasoning you want. It's just basically the dry stuff that you sprinkle on your steak to cook it. And we're gonna get this temperature up. And like I said, this is going to start cooking and we're gonna leave it on this side for about five minutes before we turn it. Now, one thing about flipping this around in the pan a little bit here, we're giving it an even chance to cook, but also the olive oil, the seasoning and everything is getting a chance to move through all of the beef. And that's important while we're cooking it. Once it's flipped over, we're going to cook this other side of the beef for at least another four to five minutes because we want this really cooked. We don't want it to be like pink or bloody or whatever because it doesn't look really good on your sandwich when you're making the food or something like that. So go ahead and flip each one of these until they are flipped. You can tell because once you flip them over, it's a totally different color and just work your way through the whole pan. Now, if you notice that some things on the outer edge aren't cooking as well as those in the middle, you can always change the position of these things to give them a fair chance to cook. This does take a minute to flip these though, but it's worth it in the end to make sure they cook evenly. And if your tongs cooperate with you, you can actually flip these well. Mine actually was slipping off of these a little bit because of the oil, but that's okay. I'm going to get there. And once these are all flipped, like I said, another four to five minutes of cooking time. And we want to make sure that once these are totally to the like four to five minutes, they don't look pink, they don't look bloody, and we want to make sure everything is really good. So we just want to let these have their time to cook. And then when we get to the point where it's about four minutes, we're going to add in some minced garlic to this to give it a little bit more flavor. So now when we come into this point, we're adding at least a teaspoon of minced garlic. And I would just drop it in the center and then work it throughout the pan. So that way all of the beef is going to get the benefit of the flavor. Because as you can see, it's really mixing through with the oil and the liquid that came out of the beef to actually get this all over the place. And everything is going to get its fair share of the garlic. However, you do not want to cook this for more than a minute because once you go past about a minute, it's going to start having a really bad taste to it. You just want to go for a minute because you don't want to scorch the garlic and make everything taste bad. 
So we're going to just keep doing this up to the minute marker and then we're going to remove this from the heat and let it sit to the side. Now if you saw something in there that might have had a little bit of red on it, you could flip it over and let it cook for that last minute. Now we are taking a block of mozzarella cheese. This is eight ounce block. We're going to shred it because I don't like the stuff that comes in a bag because it doesn't melt well. But this stuff does because when you shred it, it's like that kind of cheese you pull off a pizza and it's like stretchy and chewy and wonderful. It's so much better than if you use the bag that's kind of dried out because of a low moisture point and it doesn't melt very well. This, however, will melt and make your sandwich look really wonderful if you're putting this on sandwich, pizza, anything you want to put it on. It's going to look so much better than using that bag of shredded stuff. So you really don't want to do that. So we're going to work with this until we get it completely shredded and then you will see that there is a lot of cheese here. But this is getting divvied up between the two different pieces of bread we're making. So there's plenty there for it. So we took a half of a French loaf, we cut it, and then we're going to slice it through the center so that way it's making two almost even pieces here. And we're going to put this onto a foil lined pan because we want to make sure it's easy clean up. Then we're going to spread butter over the top of this. Then you only need like probably two to three tablespoons of butter. And we're just going to work this into the top of the bread to where it's completely over top of it from side to side, back to front, just to make sure we do a really good job of that. And once you get a decent amount of this on here, we're going to bring in some olive oil and just drizzle it over top of both of these. And again, use the spatula to work that into the butter because it's going to give it a lot of flavor. So go ahead and work that in. And then when we're done with this, we're going to add some more to the top of this because basically what we're going to do is broil this before we even get to putting the cheese and meat on top. So right now we're going to add a little bit of Italian seasoning and you're just going to do a couple of pinches on each side. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just make sure that you have a decent amount of it on as you can see that I'm doing. And then we are going to take some cheese and this is just the regular Parmesan cheese that you have in your refrigerator you put on a pizza. But we're going to put at least, I would say, about one to one and a half tablespoons on each one of these. And just make sure there's an even coat on top. Then we're going to put this under the broiler. And when it comes back, it will look something like that. And now we are putting slices of provolone on top. I put two on each one. Then a little bit of mozzarella just to put a base on this. And then after we get them both coated with the cheese, we're going to bring the meat in and make layers um, on both of these pieces of bread. So go ahead and make sure you have a decent base going there. And then just stack the meat as best you can. The best thing about this is when you add more mozzarella on top, it's going to kind of glue this down and it's going to stay in place. So that's the wonderful thing. It's like it will stay together for you. Now, when you see these, this is a lot on this thing and you're thinking, wow, you're supposed to eat this like all at once. No, you can eat as much of this as you want. You can slice this into sections and like have it in thirds or whatever, or you can eat however you want to do this. This is a meal in itself, I got to tell you. But go ahead and stack that meat on there and then we're going to bring back some more of the mozzarella and put on top of that. And ignore that scar on my hand because I was playing in the garden the other day and the garden bit me. So, not always nice. But anyway, here goes the rest of the cheese on top and we're just trying to be even about this as we can to make sure that each of these gets it. Now, if when you're putting the cheese on it tries to fall off to the side, this stuff is kind of moist so you can press it down a little bit to make it stay in place and just keep it where it needs to be until you can get this underneath the broiler again. And if a few pieces drop off, just pick them up and put them back on top. Now this is going to go back under the broiler again to melt the cheese and make the meat warm up a little bit and everything is going to just kind of blend together to make this huge piece of bread that you're going to be eating. So when it comes back from the broiler it looks something like this and all you have to decide at this point is what you want to serve with it because you can put anything with this you want to there's so many options. Um, I usually do french fries and it's just something that's really great with it that works and has a great taste and it's just like you're almost eating a sandwich with your french fries and this is what mine look and th this is just amazing to eat. I think you really will enjoy this. I hope you liked this video and if you did please like and subscribe and if you get a chance check out the Southern Mountain Kitchen website where you can get a free recipe, check out the cookbooks available from the Southern Mountain Kitchen and if you'd like to you could order a cookbook at a discounted price cheaper than Amazon with shipping that is also cheaper than Amazon. So if you get a chance check it out and I hope you have a great day.